Hi, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a workflow that's going to put some approval or process on the customer record. So let's go ahead and create a new customer. I'm going to call that customer new customer for a workflow. Okay, I'm going to set a subsidiary instead because obviously this is a that's with one world account you might not see or need this now have a look at the bottom here i'm creating a customer and i've got these fields accounting status pending accounting review accounting approval is empty accounting approval date is empty also but i can't change this i've got no control on these fields okay so i'm filling up my customer form with the emails the phone number their priority, whatever they're interested in, their address, uh, their sales detail, their marketing, their financial stuff, if I've got them. And I'm saving the customer. Okay, so once I'm saving the customer, what happens next? I'm, I'm seeing here a little approve button. And at the bottom here, I can see that the status is still pending accounting review. Now, let's say I'm just a salesperson, I'm doing my job, I'm entering customers and I'm just going about my activities. And now let's say I'm an accountant, I'm some, someone who's supposed to be approving this. So I can track this on my reminders. You see here, I've got a customer that's pending accounting approval. So if I click on this, I know, I can see now, I know which customers have been created and which ones I need to confirm or reject. Now, if I click on view here, it's going to take me to the customer record where I can review the information, of course, and then decide to approve or add a second button where I could reject it. Right. So right now it's pending accounting review, etc. So if I click on ACC approve, which is a custom button, which has now disappeared because I approved it, you will see now the accounting status is approved. It's showing me the name of the approver and the date when this customer was approved by the accounting team. Now, how do you get to do this? So first of all, you need to create these custom fields, accounting status, accounting approver, and accounting approval date on the customer record. Uh, I assume you know how to do this, but just a quick reminder, if you go to customization, list records and fields, you go to entity fields, you create new, you click on new rather you give it a name the type you know if it's a if it's a list of let's say uh, accounting statuses like uh, pending approval approved or rejected then you, you go and look for that list if you don't have that list it's because it's a custom one i created for my own sake you can just click on plus here and of course you know how to create a list you know so you name the list uh, you put values in here <clears throat> okay you save the list and then what's going to happen is you, you're going to see the list appear here and you can uh, apply that to customers on the display section you're going to show it on the main section uh, you're going to make its display type disabled so no one can fiddle with that once they're editing or creating the customer uh, and of course you can put a default value here uh, you can say that, for example, well, let's put the let's put the accounting status so I can really show you what the default value could be. So if I click on this, it's showing me the values that are within my list. So uh, as a standard, I want that to be pending accounting review, right? Because the fields are not modifiable when you create the customer or edit it. So I want that to show pending accounting review. So you save and you close that. So you'll do the same for the dates, for the employees. I believe you know already how to do this. Your interest for this video is how to create a workflow. So let's cut to the chase and go right to it. So if you go to customization, workflows, workflows, you'll click on new. So you're gonna name that workflow. You can put an ID, you know, if you're diehard NetSuite, then you can put uh, your specific ID in there. Uh, 
whatever you want to call it. Uh, the record type is going to be the customer and it's only going to be on customers, not on leads or prospects. I want to release it because you know I'm on I'm on the demo environment. If you are just testing, then you will be seeing the changes you're making and no one else will. If you put it to uh, release, then everyone will, considering that you know within the workflow you decide who can and can't see uh, the workflow action itself. At the bottom, the initiation is event-based. Uh, it's when you get to the customer record once you view it that you, the script is going to run and you want to set it on view or update. Uh, the trigger type, uh, we're going to leave them to all and uh, that's it. You can save this. Let's click on edit. So you will be granted the uh, state one, a blank state one. Uh, the states are like boxes where things happen. You know, the first state is where we're going to say that we want to show a button, which is going to be called approve. Uh, the second one is where the, the field values are going to be changed. And between the two, there's a transition. Okay. And the transition uh, basically lets you set how uh, things are moving from state one to state two. It could be the click of a button. It could be a, a, a field that's being changed or a value that's too high within a transaction and stuff like that. So let's open up the state one. I double left click on the state one and it's bringing me to this screen. Now what you'll do is you'll click on new action. Before I click on this, I just want to point out the condition I'm using here. I'm saying I don't want that button to appear to anyone who's viewing a customer record. I only want that button to appear to users with the role accountant or administrator. But also, I don't want the button to appear if the status of the approval is approved already or rejected. Because if it's been approved or rejected, I shouldn't see the button approve again. Right. So you can add multiple conditions if you need to. So if you click on new action, you will see uh, you can add a new button here. And here you're going to give the name of the button. So ACC approve. approval, for example. Now, this is where you're going to set the condition on who should be seeing that button when when that button should be shown. And this is basically the, the fields I use for this scenario. I said the user role within the field. I want the user role to be any of these two roles. Okay, and I also want the status of the accounting status field not to be approved or rejected. I'm a bit silly here because what I could have done is instead of none on, I could have said any of, and instead of these two, could have removed that and I could have said account, pending accounting review. So whenever it's pending accounting review, it's going to show. All right. So great. Uh, we name the button. We put a condition on it. Uh, the trigger is before record load and the event type is you because we only want to see that button when we're looking at, when we're viewing the customer, not when we're creating it or when we're editing it. Okay, you can save that. Okay, so the button is there. Now, it's great to have a button, but what needs to happen now is we need a second state. We need a second set of actions. What happens when the button is clicked? Okay, so you'll click on new state and it will create the second box here, state two. Double click on that and go to new action again. I've got three fields I need to populate. So I, don't, I won't be doing three on one action. I'm going to be creating one action per field that I want to populate. So one of the set field value I want to do is on the accounting status, Remember, the standard one is pending approval. I want to change that to accounting approved. So what I do is um, I just uh, trigger on entry. Event type, I leave empty. The context, still the same. The only two missing are the web application and web store. 
there's no condition this time because the condition was, was already on the button. And the only thing I did is uh, set the field and set a static value to accounting approved. That's it. You save that. And you can do it again. I mean, you, you redo another set field value for the date. So it's going to be a new action, a new action where it's set field value again instead of add button. And it's still on entry. There's still no event type. There's no condition again. And at the bottom, we're just changing the approval date. But instead of a static value that we use for the statuses, we are now using the date and we're setting that as today. Save that. And then we're going to create the third action. So you click on new action again, select set field value, and you're going to get pretty much the same thing on the top side, of the top level of the uh, fields. Still on entry, still no event type. And you scroll down and on the field, you look for accounting approver because we need to know who has approved it, who clicked on that button. It's a static value and the selection is current user. Save that. Once you've saved this, you will have two uh, set of states, state one and state two, but there's still going to be a transition that needs to happen from state one to state two. For that to happen, go back to state one, double click on it and go to transitions. I've already created one here, so we can have a look at it. So you will see it's from state one to, you could have multiple states, so I'm saying it's to state two. What's the condition? I could set a condition to this. Right now, I just said, well, I'm just gonna execute it once the button is clicked, right? I'm not putting any condition here. So once it's approved, it goes from state one to state two. So once that button is clicked, ACC approved, it goes from state one to state two. There's no transition on, no event type. The context are still the same, 36 of 38 with the web store and web application not being part of it. And that's it. Save that. And you will be back to that uh, page where now you will see the state one, the state two, and the transition. Okay, once you've got this, you save that workflow and you'll go back to your list, relationship customers, new, and you will be able to see if you're logged on, of course, as the role that you're supposed to be seeing the button, then you will be seeing the button once you've saved the new customer. So, um, right, so let's put a subsidiary on this. Okay, here you, you're not seeing the button here because we're creating the customer. Now I'm saving that. Okay, great. Now you can see it, ACC approve. But the only reason I'm seeing it is because I'm an administrator. If I was anyone else creating a customer, apart from the accountant and the administrator, I wouldn't see that button. Okay, now if I go to my dashboard, I refresh my reminders. I see I have one customer that's pending accounting approval. I click on this and here is the third customer setup after workflow. I click on view and here I see that yes, the status is pending accounting review. The accounting approval is empty because it's not been approved yet and the accounting approval date is empty. I'm gonna click on ACC approve again And right now you see that it, the status has changed to accounting approved with the name of the approver and the date it was approved on. So I hope this video was useful to you. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you found value in this kind of videos on NetSuite. Thank you and see you, goodbye.